I think the church has been asleep at the wheel for a long, long time. Yeah. We've, we've thought yeah. that having a program and a, a, you know, a, a certain style of praise and worship and you know, following the big guys and we'll just kind of be lazy and not seeking God for ourselves. I think it's ended the church up in the same trouble as uh, Eddie Smith and his, and his triumph many years ago in, in Great Britain. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's going on with COVID is that because every state is governed different, uh, yeah. because guidelines are different everywhere, uh, we can't really copy anybody. Uh, you nope. know, I, I get online once a week with pastors from across the nation, but 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 we can't just follow this cookie cutter pattern anymore. We really, as pastors and spiritual leaders, we have to we, we have to get a hold of the mind of God and find out what do we need to do in our community because every community is different right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the reason why I started this program was a lot of pastors started calling me. I'm not a pastor, but I'm a friend of pastors. I love pastors. I, I wouldn't be a pastor if you paid me a million dollars a year. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> every Sunday is a referendum and a vote on you whether people like you or not in my 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 sensitive spirit would would fail <laughs> within a month. Yeah. But but I I, I support pastors and I mentor pastors and, and I, I I love pastors. And when this whole yeah. thing happened, I got I got so many calls from ministers saying, "What's going to happen? What what's going to happen? We're closing church." And then after after the initial actual closing of church, they discovered that their their, their tithes and offerings maintained. And they call back and they're saying, wow, we are up 5% or whatever. And then in the most recent wave of phone calls I've got is the people aren't coming back. Will the people ever come back? And I've talked to pastors. I've got a very close friend, a church of over, over almost 9,000 people. And um, he said to me, he says, I don't think they're coming back. I think we've broken the habit. I forget how, how many weeks it takes. I think it's 11. And you can break a habit in 11 weeks. And, um, I, you know, a lot, a lot of the concern now is for the, for the churches. Are, you know, we've built these, these buildings that house 5,000 and 500 are showing up. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's real concern. And everybody, and this is, this is the key of what we're talking about. Every man of God, every woman of God has got to find their own key to unlock yeah. the door in their circumstance because there yeah. are keys and there are victories that God wants to give. True. Yeah, and I think some of the, you know, I'm an eternal optimist. I'm always looking for what's good happening in the middle of bad. You know, we, yeah. I think we find our power in our pain and um, if, if and it's a negative and, and, and some people might not take this the right way, but I think if anything, what you're just talking about, COVID has helped us kind of decentralize the church. I think for too long, the church has become a Sunday morning entertainment hour. And, and what's oh, happened, or at least, well, yeah, what we're seeing happening anyway, is the same thing. People aren't coming back, but we have virtual watch parties. We have people gathering in barns and living rooms and garages yeah. um, and gathering in that way, which is forcing them to minister, answer questions, pray for people. And in and, and, and one kind of way, I think that's a truer picture of what the church is supposed to be anyway. <laughs> the original church. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They went from house yeah. to house in the original church. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I didn't well, ever answer the question of, of, about radius, but that kind of ties into it. I was, I was a part of a denomination for 25 years, and uh, I just, I, I, for personal reasons, decided I didn't necessarily agree with all the polity and the government of that anymore. And so, at almost 50 years old, uh, I stepped away uh, from a large ministry. I mean, we had. Uh, 13 buildings on one site and 136 ministries. And I just stepped away from it and basically started all over. I came out to Washington. I really love reaching unchurched people. And at that time, Washington was one of the most unchurched states in America. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 
my wife and I, we, we sold out everything. Our two grown children came with us and we all started Radius Church with the goal of reaching a community of people that either hate church, misunderstand church, yeah. or have no church background. And so for us during COVID, what's interesting is we don't, because we have so many unchurched people, uh, our church is just, it'll be four years old next month. And so because we have so many unchurched people, what's fun about it is, is, is they're not longing for what they miss. They're not longing for the three songs on Sunday morning. They're not, they're not like, we got to get back to, they're not worshiping church. They don't know. And, and so that part is refreshing. And that little part is different. On the other side of that, though, four years old, we haven't really, I guess, discipled enough for them to understand the importance of the church. So trying to get them to come back is definitely a challenge. It, it, well, what, what, I've, what I've been saying to all my pastor friends, and I'm saying the same thing to you, what you're experiencing is common all from Florida to Pennsylvania, yeah. to the West Coast, up where you guys are. It, I'm hearing the same thing all the time. That, that mm. it's, it seems like the habit folk have discovered they can watch TV or watch their computer on a Sunday morning in their pajamas with a cup of coffee. And they don't have yep. to have the bother of getting ready and fight with the wife and get the kids ready and scramble you yeah. all out the door into the car and be there, you know, and, and, and spend the first half of the service getting over, getting mad at everybody for being late. But um, yeah. the Bible says, forgetting not the assembling of yourselves together. And if you're yeah. watching today and you are not a pastor, but you go to a church and you have got out of the habit of going to church, listen to me, the discipline of getting ready to go and meet with God is good for your soul. It is better for your kids. Because if, going, if not going to church or going to church is not important to you, you are sending a message to the, your kids. You may be sound and tight with God. You may be in a relationship with Him. And you can, you can be watching this thing at your, your church online and, and tithing and doing all the right stuff, just not going there. I promise you, your kids will watch a video game and play a game rather than watch church. And you will make your kids unchurched as the most lost people in America if you are casual about going to the house of God. And I, I yeah. urge everyone watching today, why don't you make a note and wear a mask, social distance, do everything that you think is important to do to keep your family away from this thing. But the, the, worse than having COVID is having an interrupted relationship with Jesus. And wherever you're watching today, I want you to make a, I want you to promise me that you will make a commitment today that you're going to say, okay, this coming Sunday, my family is going back to church. Do you, have you any idea how much encouragement you showing up at church this Sunday would be to your pastor? Yeah. He's had to be faithful all this time. He's had to prepare messages and talk into a camera all this time. He's prayed for you all this time and, and, and has worried about this event that you are now living through. And you can say, listen, I'm going to go to church and sit where I've always sat and lift my hands and worship and give in the tithes and offerings and, and be a part of the church. If half a dozen people watching me today were to go to a church and say, we're back, Pastor, you could do more blessing and more affirmation for your pastor than you've ever done in anything else you've done. Don't let the devil stop you. There's something that happens when a body of people in a church lift their hands towards heaven and begin to worship him and they sing a song together and they applaud together and they say praise the Lord or hallelujah together. Something works inside your soul and the devil has worked. He is using COVID to try to break and insulate and isolate you, you. And if he can insulate and isolate you by yourself, it's like when lions hunt a pack, they'll look for the weaker ones and they'll go and they'll, they'll get that 
the, the one animal they're chasing all by themselves and they'll hunt that one animal. The pack runs on. But because that one animal has been isolated, it is easier to kill by the lion. And let me tell you, my friend, if you can get insulated away from your calling and your, and, and your responsibility to the body of Christ, the devil has an easier time to pick you off. And your kids, it's your kids that's important, your grandkids that's important. So I urge you, and, 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 I, and I know that Ken is, is, is agreeing with this, we need to get back to church and, and be a part of a local body.